Today is December 2nd, 2022. This is episode 210 of Maelstrom Radio. Maelstrom Radio. With your hosts, Bless. And welcome everybody to Maelstrom Radio. My name is Peter. With me as always is my good friend and co-host Quentin. We're chibis today. We are we are chibis today. We're chibis today. Uh hi. Hi. We're, we're, you're you're on assignment. <laughs> Yes, I'm out. I, that's later in our notes. Yeah. I thought. So I just explaining why some people are, would be like, if they watch this VOD later, they'll be like, what happened? <laughs> You'll have to listen to find out. Yeah. Uh, but with us, we have a special guest. We have Nobutaka Fairclaw, host of the Final Fantasy, brand new, actually brand new Final Fantasy 14 podcast, Coffee and Carbuncles. Welcome. Name. Howdy. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> um a little tired but but all right <laughs> i decided Mood. to make myself a cup of coffee about half an hour ago to make sure i was nice and awake so you are smarter than i <laughs> i have water yeah. nothing wrong with that i have shaky drink uh because they're not a sponsor and then bubble water <laughs> seltzer water <laughs> also not a sponsor <laughs> also not yeah that's true not a also not a sponsor uh, uh we do also have a producer's note in here uh mm-hmm. susan is not sorry about the picture we're using for you uh the first lesson of being a content creator is control your narrative <laughs> uh, you gave us free control over what we were going to use for your image and this is what we came up with yeah you know it's beautiful it Yes, the horn and everything is perfect. Um, I I will accept what I'm given, and we'll run with it. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. We'll get along just fine. <laughs> I, we are well, chaos. She asked what I wanted as my image, and I said something carbuncle related. So in retrospect, it's maybe true. I should have seen this coming. We got also other <laughs> options I was thinking of was uh, like just the butt end of a carbuncle. <laughs> so. <laughs> You need a little X like the cats. Yeah, like a little cat. Yeah, a little X there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But, (laughs) Nobutaka, uh, before we get into, uh, like, uh, you know, our our days and stuff like that, just real quick, just let let people, uh, you know, tell uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself before we we, we dive deeper into who you are, but like a a little taste. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Um, Okay, so I... See, I I wasn't pre-show. I'm like they're gonna ask that, so I need to have something prepared. And then it's actually asked. My brain just blanks. Um, <laughs> that's how I am with a lot of questions. Yeah, right. So I I play on Adamantois. I'm a summoner main. Um, I've played 14 since 2.1, 2.2, somewhere around there. So it's been a while now. Um, I free company leader of arcana unlimited and i'm a giant dork who who really likes his free company more on that later but also like you guys said recently a uh, podcast host and i i'd say it's going pretty well so far um just a lot to get used to lots of new stuff meeting new people but overall pretty fun awesome well, uh, let's go ahead and uh, find what everyone's been up to. So, uh, uh, Quentin, you're out on assignment. You're currently you're currently back up in the the Great White North of Canada. <laughs> yes, the uh, the the secret's out now. Uh, I am finally everything's good. So I am back uh, visiting my family up in the lovely country of Canada. Uh, I am on the East Coast again, so we are back at very late hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, everything's good. I My flight went off perfectly yesterday. Everything was good. Uh, we had a very nice surprise. My mother had no idea I was coming. 
So I got to surprise her, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, but now I'm up here for the next month, and uh, just just get to hang out. So, also, there's a lot of stuff. I haven't been home in over three years, so uh, lots of stuff that I'm missing that I'm looking forward to yeah, trying stuff. again. Did you go through your like your town and just show up and be like Gandalf in the Mines of Moria and be like, I have no, <laughs> I have no memory of this place. <laughs> No, actually, like, things don't change a whole lot, but we did go into town earlier today, and we were pointing out, like, that's new, that's new, that's new, that's new. Hmm. When do we get a Wendy's here? <laughs> Chili, Chili would love that, by the way. If Chili stepped out of his house... He would have. <laughs> the fun thing is, is the Wendy's is actually not complete yet, oh. but it is next to the liquor store, yeah. so, like, it's really good location. O honestly, one-stop shop. <laughs> yeah. Across the street, there's like a Walmart and a GameStop and a Home Depot, and then there's a liquor store, a grocery store, and Wendy's. So, I mean, you got all your basics. What? Oh, and oh. there's a Tim Hortons on there as well. Like, you have to. It's Canadian. Uh, Baconator, beer. Coffee. C coffee. C uh, wait. Baconator, Games. beer. Yeah, well, I guess brew still counts as coffee because you brew that. Yeah. Uh, trying to trying to get more bees in there. Yeah. <laughs> Bait. It, Beer, talk to Oprah. brews, uh, baconators, and bame stop. <laughs> All right. Uh, speaking of bees, I beat Hades. <laughs> you know what? One, <laughs> one, of, <laughs> one of what? One of the better ones, honestly. <laughs> Uh, I finally beat. Yeah. I finally beat Hades. I no, did it. Oh, no, no, you didn't. I did it. <laughs> you didn't beat Hades, though. I did. It. You cleared it once. I oh okay, but I did it. <laughs> the end credits do not have not rolled yet. That was not the end credits. <laughs> no, the end credits roll later. Oh. You beat. You cleared it once. You do not get the end credits yet. Mm. How many were, how so many my, were... my next challenge to you is to get the end credits, which I've already posted the, what, how to get that in our Discord. Yeah. But uh, if, you, if in, you choose to accept that challenge, then uh, we'll figure out how we're going to handle that later. But yes, there is still another condition to clear before you get the end credits. I will say, though, I did beat it with the eat stick. And, I, and the build I did... You did. Was, I don't think was... Uh, kosher. I don't think it was. Oh no, 100% it was. If you don't have like this really fun overpowered build where you're like absolutely destroying everything, then what are you even playing? I, I don't, because I like looked up like, I did my study, I did my homework, and I was like, all right, what, what things should you get for what weapon? And then I was like, I got mm -hmm. nothing. And then I was like, fine, I'll just make my Yeet Rod the best Yeet Rod ever. <laughs> and I'll just get powering that, that up. That's how your builds work, because it's <laughs> half the time, especially since you don't have anything unlocked, like, you're just putting together whatever you can, and sometimes they come up with really stupid, powerful combinations. Yeah. Like, one of my favorites still that I, I've used is the fists. But the fists, coupled with, um, I want to say it's Doom for some, like, heavy damage after a delay, and then coupled with uh, increased range and increased base damage and increase other damage mm -hmm. and basically you just have very long range fists that absolutely destroy everything and whatever doesn't destroy dies a few seconds later when the doom hits yeah it's it felt way too powerful and i absolutely demolished everything I just, good I just, times i just eat my stick at daddy's head and that worked uh the <laughs> the game awards uh are happening on thursday december 8th uh i i went and voted uh I don't I don't know what the current results are right now, but last I saw uh the uh Genshin Impact is in the lead. Uh so for the player's choice. So who who knows? Who knows uh what'll happen? Because I sure don't. Although I think I mean I would feel like Elden Ring would take it ultimately. Well ultimately uh, it comes down to like but you uh, know. uh favoritism right like it is which game has the biggest fan base and ultimately genshin's gonna beat elden ring just on that yeah oh well sonic frontiers is in the lead again so who knows it keeps yeah. it keeps rolling around i don't know what's happening but the judges get 90 percent of the vote not the fans oh uh, we'll see what happens then so but yeah like if, it, if it's just the fans then like 100 percent Although is massively larger than both Sonic and Elden Ring, yeah, probably combined, and it makes me wonder if the Sonic Frontiers vote is uh, the internet memeing. Because <laughs> let's be honest, 
The internet's the internet, of course. <laughs> the internet's the internet. <laughs> and the internet the internet's gonna meme. So yeah. uh and I, I mean not to say that for Sonic Frontier is a bad game, it's just I I don't you know, I I didn't hear I heard mixed reviews, so I'm not, you know, I don't know. So we'll 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 see. I mean, there's been a lot of mixed reviews things. Like I mean Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Yeah, mixed reviews. Mm-hmm. It's out. It's janky. People like it. So Yeah, I am looking for Nintendo put out a statement earlier, which is very rare for Nintendo as part of their like bug fixes patch. Yeah. They did mention that they were gonna be looking into it, which is very rare for Nintendo to say. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it could also be potentially a good sign, so like cautiously optimistic. I feel like with how wrapped up um Nintendo is with Pokemon and you know how how closely Nintendo and Pokemon have been affiliated over the years. I mean, I don't think Nintendo has much of a choice but to look into it. I mean, when you when you have mm-hmm. bugs that are this prevalent, all I could think of when the reviews and the myriad of videos coming out was um, very similar to the launch of Cyberpunk 2077. Mm-hmm. It's true. Where, like, I still feel I, like I that was probably confidence. worse. <laughs> It'll be a good game eventually. Mm-hmm. But I think that it's going to be a bit of a long road and a lot of worse sorries before we get there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, I will say, though, like with with Cyberpunk, you know, it, it was so down on its luck. But the fact that they released this pretty large uh, free expansion pack and then an anime came out at the same time and that anime did so well. I mean, it, I mean, it did so well. They, that, they hired Trigger to do that anime. Which was super smart. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, 100%. I mean, you put a Trigger on anything. and Well, anything that's action. If you put Trigger on something serious, I would have some concerns. But it, it, it was almost like the same sense uh, with uh, the League of Legends uh, cartoon. Arcane? Yeah, Arcane. Like, I know a lot. Yeah. Like, it, that was Ar- a Trigger, though. It wasn't, but it still like exploded League of Legends. Like people that may have not even like had that on their map was like, oh, what's you know, let me, let me learn more about this world. Like, and especially because now there's an MMO being in the works. Like, I know a lot of people are like, ooh, like maybe not, maybe not League of Legends, but maybe the MMO is for me. So everyone looked at League of Legends and they're like, ooh, what's this? Then five minutes later, they're like, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> yeah, I no. love um, when Arcane came out. It was just, it was such meme fodder because everyone, you know, like you said, was comparing it to the cyberpunk anime and it's like, this is going to get everyone hyped on League of Legends and then they're going to play it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. The main problem with League of Legends is League of Legends players. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Accurate. Uh, Another Speaking of problematic people. I was going to (laughs) say... Took the words right out of mouth. Another trailer for the Super Mario Brothers movie came out uh, on Tuesday, and uh, Susan, I think, wrote it here best. The, we're mad about it. No, wait, there was one very important moment in the entire thing that the internet is very a fan of. Um, hmm. Either, are either of you familiar with this? I, I haven't actually seen the trailer, so I don't I, know. I've seen the trailer. I, I haven't seen what the internet's... Is it the fire, actually, uh, Firepower Peach? No. Actually, aside from this, I did see someone on Twitter redo the trailer, but swapped out Mario's voice for the French voice actor. Mm. Uh, apparently, it's really good, but I haven't seen it. Fun- Funky Kong? Is Funky Kong nope. in this trailer? There, there is a Donkey Kong reference in the trailer. Oh, no, for sure. I know that. Yeah, because... Uh, uh, yeah. No. yeah. But, but I know... It wasn't, I, it was pretty blatant. I, I know they're doing a... They... they, they they reference Smash Brothers. They reference yep. Mario Kart for sure. Like that was a yep. big like scene. Um, oh, I don't know. Oh, it's one of the racers on the track. <laughs> oh, is I Link? That. Is Link? Oh, <laughs> I thought Funky Kong is one of the Funky Funky Kong. Have to go character? back and watch that again. Is Link one of the racers? They didn't put. Link. I don't think so. Link no, I don't Link. think they would. Okay, because like there's a big like Nintendo fan theory that all the worlds exist in one, which I don't think is true. Yeah, I mean Smash Bros. Everyone exists in the Smash Bros. universe. That is true. Everyone. Yeah. Everyone. <laughs> everyone. We exist in the Smash Bros. universe. We do. We have no. Movies. So all right. So tell uh, me what what is it? No, but it's it's the scene between Bowser and Luigi. Okay, where he's tucking on tugging on his mustache. 
Yes. Okay. A lot of people noticed that there was a um, certain spark between the characters. <laughs> it has inspired a lot of uh, content oh, to be no. created. Oh, <laughs> no. The internet. Oh, the internet. Why? <laughs> <laughs> because, because people like Bowser. Remember that. Bowser is, like, honestly, if you took every character in that movie, Bowser would probably be at the top. Peach would probably be second. Luigi's, well, the Toads are probably up there. Luigi's probably up there. And Mario would be, like, below the bottom characters. Yeah, Mario's the bottom. <laughs> so, uh... I was about to say, I'm so glad you didn't say Luigi's at the bottom. Because yeah. after saying Bowser's at the top, this is going to make this so much worse. It is going to make it worse. <laughs> No, like by far, if you watch that movie, like everyone is a. Someone put a really good, interesting uh, analysis together, or not really analysis, but they put it out and they just mentioned that, like, once again, Chris Pat is playing the, like, boring, bland anybody person yeah. in the movie. And they linked, like, or while, while there's, like, a strong female character that, like, absolutely does everything and gets no credit and then also ends up with him for some reason and then they're like and then there's jurassic park there was the lego movie i hope <laughs> this is just like a rehash again except yeah. with worse voice acting i hope that like canon to the games that peach does not end up with Mario. guardians of the galaxy yes that was the other one uh, because and, because well, did, peach was good in that trailer oh peach is great in that trailer like, uh, honestly i feel like peach is going to be like the major character in this show yeah and technically uh what was it uh game theory i think they proved that <laughs> susan's like eh, she's fine <laughs> so, in, in the trail like in the game in the trailer she's really good in the game like eh. although there is super princess peach and she's pretty cool in that uh yeah. i i know that in um a game theory had proven once that uh in super mario galaxy uh the princess in that is technically the daughter because she's from a the future. I, I don't know. This galaxy's crazy. Uh, that she's technically the the daughter of Luigi and Peach. It's a great go Wait, go. Who is? I kid who you is? not. Uh, princess. What's her name? Uh, the the princess. Daisy. In, no, the princess in uh, Mario Galaxy. Oh. Um. Yeah, I know who you're talking about, but I can't remember the name. Rosalina, uh, Rosalina, uh, Rosalina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I just remember the star. Yeah, Rosalina is technically the daughter of uh, Luigi and Peach, uh, and that is canon. Uh, they even like uh, anyway. Go watch the episode. It's super interesting, and uh, it, it makes you go, "Oh, uh, it's it." Mario lore is strange. Says Mario doesn't actually end up with Peach. Uh, and technically, Mario's supposed to date. I mean, that's probably for the best. Mario's supposed to date Daisy, and honestly, Daisy's cutie too. So, what was Mario complaining for? Nobody should complain. Everybody, everyone's cute. <laughs> honestly, everyone should complain if they have to date Mario. <laughs> not, not Luigi. At least, not, yeah, not uh, Luigi. <laughs> Found out the other day of like a decent Luigi voice. I'm like Mario, <laughs> like only specifically to Mar Luigi in in, in Luigi's mansion. Mario. Uh, just wants to hug a mushroom. Anyways, uh, all right. Uh, 2022. Uh, the 2022 Spotify podcast roundout came up. Maelstrom Radio is the number one podcast uh, for four fans, according. Uh, it's true. Those and are not Susan, true. Peter, Chili, and some random person we don't know. True and untrue at the same time. So uh, <laughs> it that's the spot. The Spotify version. It doesn't actually include all of our uh, our numbers from other locations as well. So. But in Spotify, four people listen to it us. Just, it just says that four people listen to us the most. That's all that it means. On Spotify. <laughs> On Spotify. Yeah. On Spotify. Uh, so, well, that was that was pretty much it. Any other end the roundup? Yeah, that was it? That's that's <laughs> what. <laughs> and as you can right. see, segues are our forte. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. So speaking of segues, uh, you want to start? You, you started a podcast recently. I, I, no, well, it's it's it wasn't an oof. I read chat, and I re I'm trying to figure out what what Chili meant by Mario is mean. <laughs> well, because he was referencing um the the game theory thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just I thought like Mario is mean. I was like, all right, I guess. I guess so. Kills a lot of turtles. I, I I was on the same page. We're good. Okay. 
All right. Well, I shifting the podcast talk. Right, we should shift the podcast talk. We, well, let's pull up. Let's get away from Mario. Because uh, Mario is not in Final... Well, I shouldn't say that. There's probably a Mario in Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, but Nobutaka... Uh, sure yeah, oh, there's a, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure there's a whole RP troop. <laughs> oh, I'm Just, sure, you know, certain. Go to Lisa and see how many are AFKing there at the moment. And... <laughs> There's a Lala fell that's running around named Toad. <laughs> Luigi's a male Viera now. <laughs> Luigi's a male Viera. Oh gosh. <laughs> no, no, no. Both Mario and Luigi are uh, cat boys. The Toads are Lala fell. Are they? Oh, they're in the cat suit. That makes sense. Okay. On Adamantois, um, we have a a usually dancing AFK. Waluigi that I want to say is an Elizan, I believe. Oh, I, might I can be see wrong. that. That it makes sense. Be here, but I think Elizan. I would. That's that sounds delightful. <laughs> Waluigi needs more love. I don't know why Nintendo hates him so much. <laughs> They're saving it for um Mario Two, depending on how the first one goes. Kind of like Knuckles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mario, Mario Two, <laughs> the Prattning. Uh, anyway, anyway, let's let's stop talking about Chris Pratt. Uh, Nobutaka, you have a podcast called uh, Coffee and Carbuncles, and uh, I think our I think everybody wants to know uh, which which came first, the coffee or the carbuncle? What what <laughs> what part was which part was like? Well, you had coffee already, so I'm assuming. But uh, you you listening to the show uh you you themed everything around um a coffee shop like a, a, a nice chat at a, a, a like a sit down at a, a cozy coffee shop yes where, where did that come from are you are you a barista do you just have a passion for coffee okay um first <laughs> off first off i'm actually i was I've been considering the podcast lately, and to anyone who listens to it, I want to say that I'm sorry, because at the start of every episode, we talk about coffee, but there is a large lack of carbuncle-related talk in the podcast. Mm. Um, so, I, I suppose coffee comes first, though, for, fu- for future episodes, I could use that and be like, now with 10% more carbuncle chat. There you go. Um, to be fair, well, coffee generally comes first in the day, too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it came first before this interview, so... Mm. Uh, in regards to the theme, yeah, I mean, like, I worked as a barista for a little bit. I don't really think long enough to count, unfortunately. I I want to say I wasn't actually all that good at it. But... <laughs> Um, I, the reason I chose Coffee and Carbuncles and this sort of roleplay cafe setting is twofold. The first being that I actually used to run a cafe event, um, on Adamantois. Mm. And I really enjoyed doing that. In game, when I have free time, I tend to go to other people's cafes because, in general... I just I really enjoy the the intimate vibes that a cafe gives. Um usually mellow music, you know, depending on the cafe, kind of low lighting and you and a friend just relaxing, talking and just having having a nice casual chat and relaxing and getting to know each other and that's kind of the vibe that I really hope people get from the podcast is just listening to it, doing whatever you're doing, and just enjoying the conversation that I'm having with my guest or guests. It's kind of a a nice, relaxing... It's like a... a... I... Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I, I was going somewhere, but I, I like... The words yeah, it's okay it's uh you, it's a it's a it's a nice conversation like it's like if you're meeting 
with your friend at a coffee shop, right? And you're having, and it's like the, and it's fall winter area and it's the fireplace is going, it's cozy. You both have a nice warm drink and you're just catching up. It's that like smooth and relaxing and you could spend hours there kind of vibe that you walk into. Uh, not like us. <laughs> We're like an industrial <laughs> metal yard. <laughs> Just everything's going on. Uh, really we, confused by this now. Yeah, we well, have no chill. <laughs> I, was, I joked um, with with Velder and Sasan, the first guest I had on the podcast, I joked with him that if people listen to the first interview and their review of it is, it sounds like two people nerding out over Final Fantasy fourteen for an hour and a half, I'll be delighted because that's exactly the the review that I want. That's the feeling I want people to get is just, it's it's one to three people having a conversation going you like 14 i like 14 wow yeah and that's great that that's but you you also deliver it on a not not in a sense of like there are the for the shows that are out there right there's the the new show and there's the the laid back like how do I how do I say this? How do I describe Bulgur around? Uh, it's 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 a like your your best Bulgur friends out. is your best friends at a bar, right? Like that's that's Bulgur around, right? Like like everyone's been had a one or two one or too many. And you're both you're all around is chaos in a podcast form. Yeah, which you know that sounds about right. Few yeah. few few shots in. <laughs> Hi, chili. <laughs> uh, uh, there and then there's us, uh, and we're we're you know. But without we're not you know, we're, no, <laughs> no, we're 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 salt in Canada. And, uh, <laughs> what? Uh, I'm salt. You're Canada. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I get it. But yeah, but like there, each show brings something different to the table. So what your show is bringing mm -hmm. is a like relaxed atmosphere and a relaxed chat um and and that's super great like like and i think that's very different than any what any of like the other shows are doing um because i think in the world <clears throat> it's something that susan and 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 quentin and i have, have started to notice and like there's apparently a thing like this movement of cozy right um mm -hmm. It, cozy it's, or comfy they're, but, they're but, both but, very similar but different but, but different yeah. yeah um and it feels like you're filling in that niche for those final fantasy 14 players who are looking for that sort of like comfort and and content where it's it is cozy slash comfy um i appreciate that thank you <laughs> Uh, is, so honestly, that's where I like to do my streams as well. So I, I very much appreciate more content like that. Yeah. Let Peter and I have very different from. <laughs> Sorry. Um so really what that comes from is I've been realizing um over I'd say over the past year and a half. The Final Fantasy fourteen community is huge, and you you constantly hear numbers, and you constantly hear that you know we have all of these servers and all these players. Um, really, the biggest example, unfortunately, of that was several housing crises now. Um, but also, if you go to pretty much any server in fourteen, regardless of region. And you go to do or um not duty finder party finder, you'll see a bunch of different listings for um player hosted events, cafes, all sorts of things beyond just the standard you know looking for someone to help clear content or farm or what have you mm -hmm. and as as I was on Adam Man toys and you know going through um party finder. And I think that all of the, the COVID lockdowns and stuff and people 
as as bad as this might sound, not having much else to do but play 14 uh, really contributed to this. You saw a lot of player-hosted venues pop up. Um, and I saw a lot of those on Adamantois. And then, you know, we got server visit. And so I'd go to someplace like Gilgamesh, where there'd be a ton. And then as as we went from server visit to um, data center visit, you know, I'd go to these servers and there'd be even more events or you'd hear about various raiders or like you guys, um, you'd hear about streamers, podcast hosts, etc. And there are all these people and all these groups who play 14 doing their thing. But realistically, I don't know most of them, and most people don't know most of them, because everyone's on their own server, on their own schedule, doing their own thing. And in my own little way, I kind of want to use Coffee and Carbuncles to help with that and show and highlight people that I feel are really doing unique things with Final Fantasy XIV. Like, um... You know, I had an event host, I had Scribe, who does a ton of lore, um, I've got some musicians and role players lined up for future episodes, and just, there, there are so many unique and talented and wonderful people in this community, and even between my podcast, um, this podcast, Moogle Go Around, Obviously, we're never going to be able to highlight all the talented people who make up this fandom, but if I can help shed light on even a few of them, I feel like that's awesome, and that's that's really what's at the core of this podcast. Yeah, and I think, like you said, like there's not a lot of creators out there that are kind of doing that and and part of that too is just like there are a lot of people out there creating that kind of content but they're not very easy to find mm -hmm. right yeah for sure so it's yeah <laughs> something uh, we definitely we, we've talked about it a few times internally too like how do we find these people or how do we promote these people or what do we do with this but it's just it's very hard yeah, it's, try to do anything like that, and and sometimes the the people that do create that content sometimes don't want to be found. Like they create it, <laughs> and but they create it, at, you know, as their as their Final Fantasy fourteen persona, and they don't want to go beyond that. Right, like as soon as the veil gets lifted slightly, that's maybe where it, you know it's it's too much, right? Um. You know, and I've we, met a few content creators um, like that so far where they're like, you know, I'd love to talk about it, but I maybe they don't want anything about their personal lives brought up or any aspects of them outside the game. I've had right. a few people who are like, um, can we just do a written interview because I'm not really comfortable speaking or they don't feel like you know maybe their english is is good enough for an extended interview or something mm -hmm. and so i only have one interview like that on my tumblr right now but i'm hoping going forward that that's primarily what the um coffee and carbuncles tumblr is going to be for is um written interviews for people that aren't necessarily comfortable doing an hour or an hour and a half um of you know speaking right yeah and that that really helps too because yeah again different forms of media for different people and having it be more accessible to all sorts of people is is, is pretty helpful right like um and the other side of that too is is it's a lot easier to search and find people especially when you do like a text-based interview for example um and you can get a lot more across without having to, like earlier when you're like, oh, wait, shoot, I had to come up with this answer. And you're like on the spot trying to like think of something um, like text-based interviews can be a lot less stressful for people. 
um, just give them a, a better experience too, especially for, for first time or newer creators. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that also, um, I, I highlight this a little bit in the intro episode, but what some people might not realize is one of the things I do with the podcast is pre-interview, I get together 18 to 20 questions and I arrange them all and then I actually show that document along with the intro and outro script to the person I'm interviewing. Mm -hmm. Because I, I never want to put someone in a position where they feel like where did this question come from? I wasn't expecting this. And now mid interview, I feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And, you know, I obviously I, I have more recordings done than what's actually released so far because I don't, <laughs> I don't want to put myself in a content drought too quick. Right. But it's very easy to do. <laughs> I've definitely had a few people that very politely are like, Hey, could we remove this question or could we reword this question? And then generally speaking, they tend to be pretty appreciative about it, which, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I've told all of my guests, um, the ones I've interviewed so far and the ones that I've been speaking with about interviewing that, like I said, I never want to put a guest into a position where they feel uncomfortable or especially not ever feeling attacked. Right. Yeah, you, you definitely don't want to put someone into that situation or, and sometimes you don't know either. Like, I know one of the things that we try to do with ours is we have kind of semi a standard form, not a form so much, but a standard set of questions that we try to ask people that come on beforehand. Mm -hmm. It's just so that we can try to give them a little bit of ease. Usually when we chat beforehand, um, like a pre-show chat and just kind of give an overview of what things are going to happen, what to expect, try not to like do anything that would be surprising or ambushing either. Yeah. Um, except with the show us your desk smalls phase that sometimes gets separate jumped on people. Yeah. <laughs> but that, but that's pretty harmless though. <laughs> like yeah. show show us the little toys you keep on your desk. Like that's pretty harmless. <laughs> so although some people are like, I don't have toys. I'm like, oh no, I'm sorry. He yeah. <laughs> asked. So, the uh and and a lot like even with our show, right? Like we you know, Quit and I are very good friends, and so you know the where we started the show and where we're at now, I think we've gotten so used to having conversations with one another that we've gotten mm. good at including people into the conversation and sitting down and chatting with them. Um, because, you know, we're, we come from the standpoint of like, we've played a lot of MMOs and we've talked to a lot of people and, 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 involved ourselves with a lot of people in other MMOs and, and the content they've created in those, those spaces, even before we did a podcast. Right. And, and it's interesting to see what people, uh, create and how they created that, um, that content. Uh, so with you specifically, um, it is a, a time, right? Like right now, you know, Final Fantasy 14, you know, for it, like good nor bad is I would ex say experience a little bit of a lull, I think, because of Endwalker, how it ended. It was a very final uh, and, you know, finalized ending to a, a very long story arc. Um, and, you know, I, I'm interested to know why uh, why start a Final Fantasy 14 podcast now like what what spurred the the wanting to to essentially turn on the mic and and start recording something <laughs> um a lot of it really has to do with um self confidence issues to be completely honest like i i haven't always had the best self confidence or self esteem and even when I was coming up with this idea of I'd really like to do a podcast, I'd really like to shed light on the community. 
Um, there was admittedly a lot of self doubt that came with that. And then after talking with people, after wrestling with this idea literally for months, finally it's like, well, you just kind of have to jump into the deep end and do it. <laughs> and so it's it's definitely not like I woke up and three weeks later I was doing a podcast. Um, it was, hey, so I kind of, I've been thinking about this idea. Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. What if people don't like it? I don't know. And then um, I keep bringing him up, but my first guest, Veldrin, the reason he was my first guest is because he was so incredibly supportive, and he's an event host on Adamantois, his free company, Obsidian Chocobos. They host a lot of events. Um, they have a Christmas event that I put the advertisement up on my Twitter that's coming soon that I definitely, quick plug, I recommend everyone attend. It's great. Um, Obsidian Chocobo, their free company, are great hosts. <laughs> but I was I was wrestling with this idea and bless him, Veldorin goes, I love it. I love it. That sounds awesome. I love what you want to do with the podcast. Let me be your first guest. Let's do this. And it it brought this huge smile to my face. I was like, wow, thanks. Thank you. And then um I got to speaking with you know, other 14 players. I got to speaking with other content creators. I'm like, I have this idea. I don't really see other people having a podcast like this. Maybe it'll be nice for the community. And it, I just, I got so much support for the idea from the 14 community. And then That's... I found, oh, sorry. sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and then I found that once I I made the first episode, <laughs> I'll be honest, when I when I dropped that first interview with Veldrin, I was terrified. <laughs> Legitimately terrified. I'm like, what if I get, you know, four different reviews going, yeah, this was nice, now please stop. <laughs> <laughs> but then people were like, no, it it's solid. I look forward to the next episode. And that just meant the world to me. And I found that through through doing this podcast, um, it's helped shed light on members of the 14 community, which, like I said, that's something that's really important to me. But also, on a personal level, it's really helped with my self-confidence. And, and I know, too, like... For those who have not started a podcast, starting a podcast is an incredibly uh, nerve-wracking venture. Um, <laughs> I give you, I, as you were speaking and like talking about how you started and why you started everything, I'm just like, yep, yep, yep. And I have to give you like full, complete credit for going. And uh, Chili, we know you started a podcast like a dozen times. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, like, I. I what personally can relate to a lot of that because i have never started a podcast i don't think that i could start a podcast um i got dragged into this by peter six years ago i mean i asked um, i didn't just drag you <laughs> i mean yeah we've we've gone over this but like <laughs> having that like i can also I, I can understand where you're coming from like it has taken me five six years to get to the point where i am today like i don't i just started doing my solo streams this past year mm. uh it takes a while and I, and I don't know if that feeling of like are people just gonna like stop liking this or are they not gonna like this are they gonna just like why am i doing this like, i don't know if that feeling ever really goes away but like you said yeah the especially with the 14 community there is a lot of support there's a lot of positivity around there and even if not everyone is constantly listening or constantly around almost everyone that i've encountered or i've seen uh within the creator community at least has been very positive and kind and willing to not necessarily go above and beyond but they 
they want to promote and boost up everyone as opposed to some communities that like to be highly competitive and think that they can only be one podcast that rules everything, right? And and that's a huge factor um, with with me, especially with this podcast, is going into it, I... I was really worried about that. I was worried that like I'd try and reach out to content creators um because you know your your average 14 player like someone who you know hosts maybe one or two free company events a year you ask if they want to be interviewed and they're like yeah that'd be neat but you know when it comes to speaking with other content creators who have their own schedule, have their own stream, have their own fan base. There mm-hmm. was this fear that I'd try reaching out and either I just wouldn't be able to get a hold of them because they wouldn't bother giving me the time of day, or they'd be like, um, that's my dinner. Why why are you trying to take off my plate? Yeah. It's but, <laughs> it the case. It's a it's definitely a a a step or a hurdle you have to like i think people have to to get over it's it's you know are are we all competing for the vying for the same the 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 cool thing about a podcast is that if all of us make podcasts that just gives people content to listen to every day of the week right like if you your commute is an hour you can listen to Maelstrom Radio on Wednesday, move around on Monday, Coffee and Carbuncles on Tuesday. Like you, you fill up your week with, you know, the different opinions and the different interviews. And if you, you're like me and you're, you work in an office and you can listen to podcasts while you're working, um, you may be able to listen to more of those in one day and, and listen to other things. <laughs> and um, we do, we do have the that edge on some of the other forms of content right like if yes we're streaming on twitch right now while we're recording this but if we were streaming final fantasy 14 and and also moolgaran was streaming and then also you were streaming and i'm a fan of all three of you yes i can have all three tabs open but you know it, it gets hard to like you know i gotta like oh i might mute your stream for a little bit it it it's it's tough right because then you might miss something that happens on one stream that's really funny and you're like oh i missed the moment and it's like it, that's tough so there are some aspects of content creation where it's like it's tough as a viewer or, or a, a a fan of the content um but as a creator of content yeah we're you know we're we're always chatting uh, you know, we're, I think after the years of doing this, you know, we're, Quint and I are very lucky to have made friends with a lot of the different podcasting, uh, folks out there that are, uh, have, have come and gone and are still here. Um, and a lot of us have been on each other's shows and, uh, we've all interacted and we've all met up at fan fest at one time or another. Um, so, like, very lucky to be a part of uh, that sort of base of content creation where it's like, this. it's not a competition, it's, oh, how, you know, what, what's going on with your show right now, and, you know, invite you on to catch up and see what's, what, what have you been talking about lately, and, you know, what's changed on your show, and, and find out what's going on over there, um, which is fun, because our shows have all evolved over time. And, uh, it's, it's always fun to see, and it's fun to see new people join the podcasting group because it's not, <laughs> I, Quentin would probably, you might agree with me. I feel like mm-hmm. people will often choose the route of YouTube or Twitch because that is where the popular areas are. And podcasting is very saturated. Uh, it's not like early podcasting days where you could create a podcast and um like easily blow up like like i think the final fantasy 14 community if you're listening to a podcast it's usually 
uh, <clears throat> the the demographic for that is a little bit older. I would say it's usually people that are, have a commute and go into work um, versus, you know, a younger crowd who may uh, just may have more time to play the game and be on Twitch and watch YouTube. Uh, I, I think I think I'm fair in that assessment. <laughs> Susan, hi, the demographic here. <laughs> hi, the demographic. Here. I lost my voice for a second. <laughs> Susan, listener of podcasts is really <laughs> well i mean like you just said um at least for me that was that was actually a bit of a um intimidating factor is that you do have a lot of 14 content creators who do admittedly support each other um talk a lot appear on each other's content and I was I was kind of worried about how tight knit of a group that was, mm -hmm. but um, I I set up the Facebook page, I set up the Twitter page, and the the very day that I set up the Twitter page, I got the nicest message from Susan saying, "Welcome <laughs> to the content creator community," and my heart just melted. I was. Like I said, with my fears of people being like, why are you trying to take off my plate? Getting that message just meant the world to me. And then, you know, um, Emmy, Emmy from Musecast 14 has always mm -hmm. been, for, for a few years now, has been a friend of mine, and, and she was really supportive of me making the podcast. And Susan you know, was like, hey, um, if you need ideas for guests, I have ideas. If you need me to help you get in touch with someone, I can do that too. And um, Synodic Scribe and a few other 14 content creators have just been absolutely wonderful. And that, that fear I had of, can I get into this tight-knit group, you find that it's, it is sort of tighten it in the sense that a lot of content creators do know each other um i've noticed that a lot of content creators are in each other's discord channels but it's not tight knit in the sense that other people can't get into that group because i i feel like i was followed on on twitter and invited to discords pretty quick yeah, mm -hmm. it's not a closed circle. Um, Susan, Susan just said it's not a closed circle, and absolutely, it is, it is an inclusive group. Yeah. Yes. It's an very open oval. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> um, but you were talking, you were talking about not choosing YouTube or Twitch um, for this idea. And frankly, I'm not sure how Coffee and Carbuncles would work as like a YouTube or Twitch channel because I feel like it would be me and it would be it would be my character, Nobutaka, sitting at a table across from someone else's character while we do the interview and I guess like occasionally clicking emotes at each other. And I feel like that wouldn't quite I feel like that might be a bit dull, actually. <laughs> I we we have friends that do podcasts just like that. Believe it or not, right on Twitch with their characters. Just, oh, you've been involved in one of those before. I have. It's very true. Uh, so it is possible to do just that. Um, I, I I think with your show and and the the how you uh, curate your. Um, your questions for for your guests and allowing them to have say on what was asked and even after the fact i'm assuming if they say hey post show they say can you cut that you know my response and that i'm sure you would do that where if it was live on twitch you don't have that option there's there's no stop button i mean you could stop instantly but it, it's there right you'd have to go back and delete everything quickly um but you know, it's you. You have like there's not enough time to be like, 
stop, hold the presses. So like they'd have to really be careful of what, like what they say and how they say it. There, fortunately, there hasn't been too many instances of that. Um, a lot of the time, what I find is, so we we do these interviews based on whenever is best for the person I'm interviewing, and I just try and you know make make my schedule work around that. But there have been times where like mid interview we've had to stop the interview because there's something, you know, for example, like we were talking about earlier, you might suddenly have a tree fall outside or a windstorm or pets are acting up or what have you. And, and that all gets cut. Um, and, you know, hopefully the end product is this really smooth seeming interview, but yeah, it's, I definitely couldn't imagine, at least with the kind of atmosphere I want to create with this podcast, doing it in in a format like YouTube or Twitch. I mean, if <laughs> if I ever decide to do something live or say that I decide to interview a Twitch streamer and they're like, can we do the interview on my channel, then... Absolutely. I mean, whatever helps accommodate my guest, but it's not something that I feel like I'd be able to do regularly and still keep the same atmosphere. Um, you know, we have had like guests that are VTubers and how do we accommodate that? Like how, like the first time we're like, how do we make that happen? And we made it work. And then we've, we've now we know like, okay, we can make this work. This is the thing we can do now. We're like, we did the first one and we can do it the second time is like, now we know the tricks of making it work because for that person that you know that that the their their streaming persona is that you know and they're you know and we've had some say well i i, I could show my face i've had you know there's other places where my face is shown but we want to we want to make them comfortable like we don't want to <laughs> like say no no like if you're known for this you know i don't you know we don't want to disrupt that for you how do we make that work um yeah absolutely so it is you know, we, we learning to accommodate, um, guests of all types is, uh, <laughs> is, a, is a learning now that we know how to do it. Yeah. Now it's, it's pretty easy and straightforward, but the first time it's like, well, we're going to we're try it out. I guess <laughs> <Figure it out. laughs> roll the dice, see what happens. So, um, but for you, I mean, how do you feel? Like, how are how are you feeling being a content creator? Like, I, I do you feel that this is a, you know, this is like a fun hobby for you? It, do you feel like this is, you know, you'll do it for like a little bit until you you feel like you've had enough to say? And um, I feel I feel pretty good about it actually. <laughs> like I said, it's it's been a nice thing to help me deal with with my own anxiety and, you know, build my own self-confidence as well as help, you know, basically show off my guests to the community, so to speak. But in regards to how long I'll do it, I really couldn't tell you. I think that I want to do it for a while. Um, right now, it, how do I put this? It's not always easy to find guests, and when you do find guests, there's, at times, a lot of overlap. Um, like, we don't... I don't feel like there are a ton of Final Fantasy XIV lore content creators, but the ones that I am aware of are really good, 
But the thing is, I don't ever want to have three episodes straight of people who focus on 14 lore. So it's it's kind of figuring out, well, who do I want to have on? What do I want to chat with them about? And then trying to space it out. Right now, I think I want to do... I want to do 10 episodes. And then at the end of those 10 episodes, maybe take a month break, um, call it season one, get some reviews, figure out, you know, how did it go? What can I work on? And then take it from there. I mean, I certainly, I would like to have Coffee and Carbuncles be a project that goes on for quite a while. And like I said, so far I've gotten great support for it. So I feel like I feel like the support is there and the the audience is there. Um and at first I was worried about if the free time would be there to do it outside of my, you know, nine to five. But I've managed to make that work. But I think right now the plan is get through the first 10 episodes and then evaluate, figure out what I can fix and do better, and then line up guests for season two, hopefully. Great. Yeah, we we uh we were like, no, we're just gonna keep doing episodes until we were all old and haggard. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, to be fair, uh, we also just have Susan to do a lot of that work for us. Yeah, so we, we are just, incredibly lucky. We just have to be old and aggro. <laughs> Done. <laughs> I, so, like for so something we do, uh, like for episodes that, like, hey, you know, we're we're not gonna be able to do a live episode this day. But there's something like we do where. Uh, since you're you're thinking about doing seasons, we we fill in the gaps with uh, the bonus rounds, um, and it's more of a I want to say intimate chat. It's, not, it's more of it, it. It's less of the the like a structure of our show, and it's more of a conversation between Quint and I, as if the conversations we would have anyway, right? Like Quint and I have always, even when we were just gaming together, we talk about MMOs. <laughs> like we talk about gaming, we talk about MMOs, we talk about what we love and pa what we're passionate about uh, them. And it, 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 and Susan says, is correct. It's a more focused chat. And, <clears throat> and like, I, I think we both like putting those out because those can be easily long form. <laughs> compared to this like we try to keep this one you know to a specific time as roughly a specific time frame for those we could if we're like if we just turn on the mics and we had stuff to say it could be easily like oh we well we did a three-hour show <laughs> that's and like even like the last uh well uh, yeah even the last one uh it was like we're like all right we're gonna do an hour and we did two hours like we you know <laughs> we went way over <laughs> so uh, it, do you, you feel that, you know, that is it, it with the, the way you're trying to structure it, if, if you're going to do like a seasoned thing, would you do something in between those seasons or do, do you think you would actually just like take the rest and say, Hey, I'll, I will be back. And, or would you do like a, a couple of bonus episodes where you're like, Hey, just checking in with everybody, let you know that, you know, what's going on or like. You know, or would you like do like a little bonus is like, hi, hey, here's a here's a quick pro tip with coffee or like, you know, something like that. Do you ever think about filling in the gap in between with like a quick like five minute update of what's going on with you or anything like that? Or do you think you'd actually like show, no show, and then show again? <laughs> At this point, I think I'd have to wait until until we get to episode 10 and see see what happens. Um, I do have a lot of projects I do outside of the show, and, and those do take up a lot of time and demand attention at points, but I've gotten pretty good lately about scheduling things um, better than I used to be, so I think that it... I guess it's just kind of going to depend. Um, 
<clears throat> I wouldn't mind during that gap maybe focusing on appearing on, you know, like Moogle Go Round and Maelstrom Radio and other content creators, podcasts, Twitch streams, etc. Um, but also I think it's just right now how a typical weekend for me goes with this podcast is usually 10 a.m. on a Saturday to about noon or one, I'll do the recording. Saturday afternoon, I'll do all of the editing. Um, Sunday is a lot of like, hey, the new episode's going to drop tonight. And then Sunday evening is dropping the episode. And then Sunday through Monday is seeing views, what people think, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so that that tends to take up one weekend of my month. And this is actually that weekend for that. Um, the next episode will be out Sunday night. And so I think that depending on when I get done with stuff, and I feel like you know this is a good good place to have a little break or if i feel like personally i need to give myself more time to work on other projects um there might be you know a month or two i i'd like to hopefully keep it to just a month because i don't want to go too long without releasing new content but there might just be a month of there's not going to be a podcast this month but, you know, catch me hanging out with so-and-so. And just give myself a bit of a break from having to worry about recording and editing and promoting and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned, you mentioned Moogle around and I know Chili's like, let me slide in those DMs. Let me get in there. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, was, so I, I was talking with Chili earlier because, you know, one of the things about being a new content creator is checking out everyone else's content. And uh, how do I, to, to put this as nicely as I can, Chili gets around quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> honestly that's about how we describe it normally yeah, that's so. it. honestly you're not you're not off that it's probably no. how we would describe it as well yeah 100 percent. that is exactly what we would say i kid you not and chili can attest i actually sent chili a message this afternoon and it said something to the extent of one of these days i'm gonna get a message from someone and they're gonna be like i absolutely loved that interview with chili and i'm going to blink and go um, excuse me, what? And then I'm going to look at my post podcast episodes and it's just going to be there. And I assume that's how it works. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, except for, uh, what was it? Mr. Hat. Oh, wait, no. What's, what's, th there's, a, there's one group that Chili has never been on a podcast with. I think it's, ever. I don't think he's ever been on, uh, uh, State, of the, State of the Realm. I don't think he's yeah. been on State of the Realm. Yeah. Or, or Mog, Mog Talk. Talk. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So who knows? It seems to be a rite of passage. If Chili's on your podcast, that's how you know you've made it. It's true. The I'm... only thing I need to figure out is will, will it be any type of legal issue if my podcast episode is themed at a Wendy's? Oh, no. Chili... I mean, we've had multiple episodes around Nando's, so. Chili. <laughs> Chili would love that. <laughs> That's what Chili wants. Well, it depends. If you could get Chili into a Wendy's and do the podcast there, hundred percent. I I want to know if Chili's been on Speakers of Heidelin. That's that's the podcast I wanted to know. Chili, have you been on Speakers of Heidelin and no one's known it? Like that's the, like if he says yes, then I'm like, where is that episode? I don't think so. All right, Chili. Chili's gonna go find out if he's gonna. Now, now Chili needs to go fi figure out how to get on speakers of Heidelin. Now, now I'm just going to walk into my local Wendy's with, you know, full summoner cosplay, 
my carbuncle plushie, a coffee cup, sit down, not order anything, and just be like, don't worry. Don't worry, the person I'm waiting for will be here. Yeah, Chili's kind of like a, a a cosmic bicycle, like the, the com- cosmic community bicycle. Like everyone, <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like I should be offended on behalf of Chili. <laughs> we don't know that, Chili. Do you want to be a bi- Chili? You want to be bicycle? <laughs> Ah, uh, if he says yes, he's not offended. But if he says no, I apologize. <laughs> it really does depend on Chile. <laughs> I mean, I can't ride one, so it would be cool to be. <laughs> I can't ride one. I can be one. <laughs> yeah, then people can ride Chile. <laughs> so many questions. So many. <laughs> <laughs> his bike would have a little poop hat on it. I assume it'd be right between the handlebars. Like yeah. Just above the light. Mm-hmm. There there would be a basket. There would be a KFC bucket where the basket would go on the bike. <laughs> Someone needs to draw a chili bike. Like chili as a bike. That's what we need. What do we think that would look like? <laughs> Like a PS5, a PS5, a PlayStation sticker somewhere on the bike, uh, <laughs> a Dragon Ball Z, uh, like a Dragon Ball Z playing card of some sort in the spokes, so it makes like a that when you're pedaling <laughs> noise. You know what I'm saying? The handlebars are my Lala's massive ears. Really, we're creating a monster. That's <laughs> we're creating a body horror. <laughs> Uh, the night, the light would be a Dragon Ball. Okay, that makes sense. I feel like what we're doing is creating G pose fodder. Like one of these days, Chili's gonna be like, "I made it happen," and we're all just gonna be terrified. Yeah, Ch- Chili's like a bad anamorph. He turns into a bicycle. <laughs> oh no! Can, can we create the anamorph for it's nope. just Ch- Chili with nope. the poop turning into a bicycle? Nope. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> remember Scorpion Chili? Yes, I do remember Scorpion Chili. Lava Scorpion Chili. I do remember that. Uh, before, we, before we get out of here, uh, uh, <laughs> Taka, uh, it, it, I got one last question. Like wh- the future of your show. So outside of the the the, the seasons and we're we're, we're like what what. Where do you see it going, or where where do you want it to go in the future? Um, that that's a tough question, actually. <laughs> I mean, at this point, um, if if anyone wants to put any names in anyone's ears, I'd I'd love to be at LunarCon sometime. <laughs> I'd be I down. You can sign up for that. You just got. You just got to sign up for that. <laughs> sign up. Do you like? I don't. I don't actually know how anyone gets gets. Yeah. In, I assumed it was an invite thing. No, yeah, yeah. Chili and I just signed up, and they let us in. <laughs> and then uh, supposedly we, you know, our faces made it to a uh, a specific YouTuber's uh, uh, edit for the the first winner from the first winner con. They're like, hey, look, these two dolts me. <laughs> <laughs> uh no yeah that's how chili and i did the uh so you want to be a final fantasy 14 podcaster and uh shocked that people listen to people talk about like so get get microphones <laughs> first step get a microphone step two get the internet <laughs> step three plug it plug it all in and surprisingly, it spawned a couple podcasts. And yes, it did. It it really did. I'll be honest. I was I was outside of this year's Lunar Con one taking a ton of screenshots because people's <laughs> glams. Oh wow! But also shamelessly plugging the podcast. Smart. <laughs> That's I was the way like, to do it. Gathered here, might as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why not? Um, but in in regards to. LunarCon aside, um, in regards to what I want to do with the podcast and where I want to take it, um, I mean, I 
like I said, I'd like for coffee and carbuncles to be a long term thing. I definitely like to do at least ten episodes, and then definitely more episodes beyond that. Um, it really is just going to depend on you know feedback. Um, do do I feel like I can find and schedule time with enough guests that I feel like this is sustainable because it's it's one thing that starting the podcast obviously I had several names in my head already of people that I really wanted to interview it's another thing I'm finding of actually making schedules work unfortunately like a lot mm, of people yeah. get very busy but Provided that I can make schedules work and provided that, you know, the the fan base is there for it, I would definitely love to have Coffee and Carbuncles as a long-term thing because I'm really enjoying doing it and I'm really enjoying not only getting to know other content creators, but also... Even outside of scheduled interviews, you know, you have people that have been talking with me on Discord or that I've struck up conversations with, and I'm hearing all of these stories about these are my experiences in Final Fantasy XIV, and I'd love to share those with everyone. Because I feel like, even though on the podcast I talk a lot with my guests about how I want to show that regardless of how we we use 14, what we do in 14, at the end of the day, we're all similar in that there's this game and this world that we all really enjoy. Everyone is very unique, and the more I can show that uniqueness and the more I can help bring some of these really great stories to the attention of the wider 14 player base the better and i'd love to do that for for a while awesome well in order to do that can you let everybody know where they can find you again yeah absolutely so i know susan has been kind enough to put up links um there's a Coffee and Carbuncles Twitter page, Facebook, Tumblr. Um, the podcast is available in a lot of places, unfortunately, except iTunes. Um, and for those that get their podcasts through, you know, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, what have you, um, sorry, I tried to make it work and unfortunately just didn't. But I would really suggest looking for the podcast through Spotify or Anchor. Um, it also it is on Google Podcasts, so there's that as well. All right, perfect. I'll make sure. Hey, I, I have. Go oh. ahead. No, good. I'm sorry, I, I have one one last very important question. Uh huh. How do you do coffee? Oh, oh man, we didn't ask that at all. <laughs> oh man, I said important question. So, it it really depends um, on. <laughs> I'm gonna out myself as a as a pretty big coffee snob here, so I'm not. So you're fine. <laughs> it really depends on the day, like how tired I am. And how cold it is outside. Most of the time I do like my coffee cold. But on really cold days. I'm just like this is too much even for me. Um, in general I like. I like a nice. Either. Usually either an iced latte. Or I'll take a hot breve. Um, and for those that are like well what's the difference. Let's just say that I I like my coffee with a bit of cream and quite a lot of cinnamon in it. And coffee with cinnamon sounds absolutely delicious, so it's wonderful. Um if I mean pretty much if you take just about any blend of 
coffee bean or espresso. Um, add a bit of cream or half and half, and then add some cinnamon in there and mix it up. It's delicious, and I recommend it for anyone. And there you go. Tomorrow morning. I, I do it in my hot chocolate, so I might have to try that next time I have coffee. Mm. Mexican hot chocolate. <laughs> that's spicy mm, also good spicy. <laughs> uh, all right well different show anyways different. <laughs> thank you for you guys for having me on here and for susan to reaching out um i really appreciate it of course anytime and now the question is do you would you want to come back that's really <laughs> i would love to Awesome. Well, we'll make sure that happens. 2023. <laughs> uh, next time. Yeah, next next time, time, though, Ooh. Um, I, I will definitely take Susan's advice, mm -hmm. because as much as I love that picture, uh -huh. <laughs> maybe something a bit, bit cuter that isn't the rump of the carbuncle. All right. We can make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, control your nerd. <laughs> Monkey paw. I've learned a very valuable lesson today. And although if you, and if you do say, up. if you give Susan the option and just say cute carbuncle, that's not its butt. We may end up luck. with the same photo. Again. <laughs> <laughs> no, we wouldn't do the same photo. We would come up with a different one, but uh, <laughs> good luck. Okay. Okay, fine. I'll relent next time. If. If you guys want my photo to be a picture of Chili with the um, carbuncle ears, fine. Fine. <laughs> Susan. <laughs> Draw the little Proto cat. carbuncle ooh. With, with the ooh face. <laughs> Honestly, that's a good win. That's a great win. Uh, <clears throat> by the way. Uh, Quentin will be back on streams and the podcast in 2023. We promise that that is happening. That's uh, true. Uh, Susan and I will be holding down the fort. Our stream schedule is posted weekly on Twitter, Discord, and Tumblr. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be good, dog. <laughs> it's gonna be good. <laughs> we have a Tumblr now. Uh, will there be another December podcast episode? Maybe. You have to you have to wait and see. Uh, will Quentin be on that episode? No. <laughs> So you're, we'll see. <clears throat> so, so with that, uh, that's all we have. Uh, we have coffee cast and chat on Sunday. Uh, Quentin again, can uh, Canada visiting I'm out. Uh, out. Mm -hmm. uh, so Susan and I, uh, you're gonna have to, I, I asked Susan if she would play a game, a specific game with me. That is chill. Uh, it is, uh, not, uh, the game that Quentin plays on Sunday. It's a different game. <laughs> but still chill. So we'll we'll see. You have to you have to show up. Uh so you know, twelve thirty Eastern. Be here and see if we're playing that game. Pacific, Five thirty PM uh, UCC. UCC is yeah. coffee required. Uh, no, no, yeah, no, that's we, not. we, we highly suggest a warm beverage though. Yeah. It could be cocoa. Oh, cocoa does sound nice. And be tea. It can it be, be tea. coffee. It could be tea. Yeah. We just, it, I mean, I'm not there. It could be a week. toddy. I can't, I can't say anything, but I mean, yeah, like, as long as it's nice and cozy and comfy. Toddy, toddy. Uh, I mean, it's 1230 for you. So by all means. <laughs> <laughs> nine thirty for me normally is a little early. <laughs> nine thirty hot toddy. <laughs> mm, yeah, no, that's that's just a little much. All right. Well. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you everybody for joining us uh, for this episode of uh, uh, Maelstrom Radio. We had a lot of fun, uh, but you know how it goes. Till C swallows all. Keep listening. Maelstrom Radio is brought to you by Flattis, Shinter, and me, Susan Sprinkle. 
Join us for live podcast recordings and game streams on twitch.tv slash Maelstrom Radio. Give us your feedback. Send an email to show at maelstromradio.com. And please check out all of our links at l-i-n-k-t-r dot e-e slash Maelstrom Radio. Views and opinions expressed by our hosts and guests do not reflect the views and opinions of any companies discussed on this episode.